happening right now. A notorious lawman back on the other side of the law. A judge just decided Rutherford County Sheriff Robert Arnold will spend the next several months in jail. News Channel 5's Sophie Nielsen Colding is outside the federal courthouse. And Sophie, he's already facing federal fraud charges. Now you say he's going back to jail. And part of his original bond release was that he wouldn't commit any crimes while out on bond. Well, just minutes ago, a federal judge revoked his bond, sending him back to jail. She says it's because of three different violations of the terms of his release. Domestic assault, witness coercion, and witness tampering. He was pretty unemotive when we saw him walk into federal court this morning. Prosecutors said he assaulted his wife on Labor Day. Then they said that Arnold punched her in the arm and threatened to suffocate her. This all co corroborated by a secret phone recording between Arnold's wife and her boyfriend, a statement she made to the TBI and an affidavit to the court. Arnold was not formally charged with a crime related to the alleged assault, but prosecutors argued that their evidence showed Arnold is a danger to others. His wife's statement to the TBI also says he told her what to report, what not to report, and that he had a deputy come over to the house on the night of the assault to, quote, mess with Megan. Arnold is facing a federal trial next year in February related to the unlawful sale of e-cigarettes in the county jail. The judge said that if he would have resigned his position as sheriff, that her decision might be different. But she said that there's too much concern over his alleged abuse of power, which raises a couple of questions moving forward. How will he carry out his duties as sheriff from inside the jail? We'll have updates on our website today at newschannel5.com and our Chris Conti will be bringing you more details on this story later in the day on our broadcasts. Reporting live in Nashville, Sophie Nielsen Colding, News Channel 5. More than 2,000 students are in the middle of a developing situation right now at Antioch High School. News Channel 5, Sarah McCarthy is live there right now. And Sarah, you're hearing police are on campus making a sweep of the building. Is that right? Yeah, we see several Metro police cars here. If you look over towards the entrance of the school, you can see one of those cars, but we've seen several cars come and go this morning. We've been out here for about half an hour. So what we know so far is that someone made an unspecified threat on social media toward Antioch High School and Glencliff High School. Both of those buildings will have heightened security throughout the day, police checking people as they come in and out of the building. So that means that the buildings are on a lockout, not a lockdown. So people can still come and go, but police will be there just double check who's coming in and out of the building. The same thing will happen at Glencliff and all classes that are held in portables will be moved inside today. Now, Metro Police are investigating this threat and we do not have details at this point of exactly what that threat said. But again, police will continue to investigate this throughout the day and we'll bring you updates as we get those both on air and online on News Channel 5. For now, we're live at Antioch High School. Sarah McCarthy, News Channel 5. Thank you, Sarah. In other news, another deadly morning on the roadways here after a grinding crash shut down part of Ellington Parkway for hours. Now, just before 3 a.m., the driver of a white truck veered off the road and slammed into a tree. Police say he died on the scene. Fatal crash investigators were called to determine what happened. During that time, the northbound lanes were closed for hours, for four hours, that is, into the morning rush hour. They're still working to determine what caused that accident.